Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio with a new feature here at the channel, Workbench Wednesday. And you know, this is just a casual get together, kind of a show and tell, if you will, to talk about what's new, what's interesting, what's cool, what's happening on the workbench and here at the studio. So a very happy Wednesday to you or whatever day you happen to be watching this. And so without any further ado, let's take a look at what's on the workbench. So here we have a piece of rolling stock today. This is a this is a combine combination passenger and baggage car. And I scratch built this on top of a Bachman frame with a Bachman roof on it. Basically the only parts of this that are the stock Bachman car are the roof, the frame, and the trucks and the uh, the end platforms. Everything else, the entire body was completely scratch built. And I never did a, a, a video on this because I built it, gosh, way back in, I think, um, 2015, 2016, maybe? can't remember exactly, but it's been a while. Uh, so it was really before I started doing uh, videos regularly, so I didn't do a build video on this. So I thought it might be a nice thing to share. I know a lot of people have questions about it. They see it going around the layout. So the Santa Fe, Denver, and Carrollwood Railroad is the parent company of uh, the Thunder Mesa Mining Company. That's, that's the Big Brother Railroad to the Thunder Mesa Mining Company, and it's, it's the main connection with the outside world. So the story here is that this combine is on pretty much permanent loan from the SFDNC Railroad. So that's why you see it running around Thunder Mesa. It's one of the only pieces of uh, passenger equipment that, that we run. Um, it is based on Combine 101 from Disneyland. The original Disneyland passenger train uh, had these bright yellow cars like this, bright yellow and green, uh, very beautifully detailed with Victorian stenciling on the corners. That train is known as uh, Retlaw 1. <laughs> Retlaw, of course, was Walter spelled backwards for Walt Disney. Retlaw was the company that ran uh, and owned all the trains at Disneyland in the early days. Owned the trains, owned the railroad, owned the right-of-way, owned the monorail, too, when they put that in. So this is kind of my tribute to that car. This is, uh, as uh, as is often reported, this was Walt Disney's favorite car, Combine 101. And this, uh, on the Disneyland Railroad, this would have been the car right behind the engine. Uh, this car still exists, the prototype for this car, and you can see it uh, at uh, Griffith Park. It's right, it's parked right next to Walt's barn. You can actually uh, tour the car, walk through it. They've got a little museum display there. And I think they're open on the third sen third third Sunday of each month, so you can check that out. Now this car is a little bit unusual in the way that it's put together, the way I built it. This siding on here is not wood. No, this is actually printed paper. The entire car body is made out of illustration board with printed paper laminated to the top of it. And the reason I went to all that trouble of building a, a whole new body for it, and let me just take the roof off real quick too so you can see inside, uh, is that I wanted it to have the proper doors and windows that match the prototype. The prototype had these distinctive round top, still has these distinctive rounded top doors, and what are essentially school bus windows. They used old school bus windows uh, for all of these passenger cars. Um, and of course I wanted the, the cool graphics, you know, the, uh, Wells Fargo and company express baggage, uh, on there. I wanted all these nice graphics. And as I've often said before, one of the best ways to do graphics intense work like this is to use printed paper with, uh, CG wood textures and then I just work all this up in Adobe Photoshop and print it out on a high quality uh, inkjet jet, eh, high quality inkjet printer. Say that five times as fast as you can. <laughs> and uh, 
you know, at the, at the top photo settings, the highest photo setting. What else about this car? It's lit. It has lighting on the inside. And the lighting is actually controlled with a, uh, there's a decoder in here. You might see there's a double thickness wall right in the middle. And that is to hide the decoder. You can't tell it's a double thickness wall when you're looking through the windows from each side. So it's a little bit of an illusion there. So it's got a little decoder in there. So I can turn these uh, lights off and on as the train runs around the track. These Bachman cars, you know, have pickup through the trucks there. So I took advantage of that. Uh, the interior is uh, modeled with some, those are some Grantline uh, coach seats, Denver and Rio Grande Western coach seats, and a coach stove back there in the back. There's even a lavatory in the back corner, though it doesn't really have a toilet in it. Uh, and again, the interior is also printed paper. You can see the paneling in there. And that works great for what you see through the windows. When it's on the outside of the car, you have to do some 3D effects. You have to build it up in layers like this. These are, you know, there's actually has some relief there. Um, you know, especially on like the doors. Let me turn this around so you can see the door. These are all built up in layers to uh, to give it that 3D look. And you know, that, uh, that fancy scroll work uh, stenciling there on the end, that's all printed paper as well. And that is basically just printed paper wrapped around a toothpick. So to do those uh, uh, curved corners like that. So like I said, just the roof and the, let me make sure I get this back on here right so the, the smokestack lines up with the stove. Uh, funny story, I ran it on the layout for probably a year with the roof on backwards until somebody pointed it out. <laughs> the smoke, the stove's down here, not in, not in here, not in the baggage compartment. Uh, the trucks and everything, the trucks and the wheels are painted the Disneyland colors, green and red down there. So this is just my little tribute to Walt Disney and his uh, beloved Combine 101. The reason he loved the Combine so much is because Walt actually worked in a Combine on the Missouri Pacific when he was a kid. His, uh, his uncle? Yeah, his uncle was an engineer, and he got a job on the Missouri Pacific uh, as what's called a news butch. That's the kid that goes up and down the aisles and sells, you know, newspapers and chewing gum and candy bars and sodas and stuff like that to the passengers. So he spent a lot of time in a combine like this. The uh, one thing I changed from, uh, other than the name, instead of uh, Santa Fe or uh, Santa Fe and Disneyland Railroad, it's the Santa Fe Denver and Carrollwood Railroad, and the name of the car is changed to Thunder Mesa. Um, Carrollwood, of course, was Walt Disney's backyard railroad. His uh, seven and a half inch gauge live steam backyard railroad at the uh, on Carrollwood Drive in Holmby Hills, California. Don't go looking for it now; it is long gone. You can see some remnants of it at the uh, Walt Disney Family Museum uh, up in San Francisco at the Presidio, a place I highly recommend you visit if you're a fan at all of this kind of stuff. And I was, you know, so pleased with the way my combine came out that I've used the same printed paper technique again several times on different pieces of rolling stock, like this boxcar right here, boxcar 310. The siding on this is all just printed paper. The body, or the, uh, the frame, I should say, is from a Bachman boxcar that's been cut down. I actually built this before they started offering the 18-foot boxcars. So this is a 20-foot boxcar, which makes it somewhat unique. Also uh, built this caboose using the same technique, the printed paper. And the interesting thing is, is that, uh, you know, some of these cars are several years old. Like I said, this one is like, gosh, eight eight, nine years old now, something like that, the, the, the combine. And I've noticed no fading or uh, delamination or anything like that uh, from the paper siding. So it is, it is fairly durable as well, especially if you spray it with a, with a clear acrylic spray, which I've done here. That's how I can handle it and not get fingerprints all over it. I'll be doing a, uh, a more in-depth video on how I do the printed paper technique uh, using a structure to show how I'm doing it on a structure. And that's going to be coming up soon. So, hey, keep an eye out for that if that's a technique you're interested in learning.
Thanks for joining me today for this little Workbench Wednesday show and tell. I hope you enjoyed it. And you know, if you see something that you'd like some more information on in any of my videos that I didn't cover, you know, put it down in the comments below and maybe we'll talk about it in a future episode. Until then, I'd like to thank you all for watching and subscribing. Keep moving forward, my friends. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.